Okay, so for this next lot, I've had to look up some help because I do want to see the other paths and I can't remember what I have and what I haven't done. So this next path, you have to take the same path as I did in my first playthrough, which was the damsel, but just a little bit different. So I'll skip to that point. Okay, so we're back at this point. We're going to save her now. So I think the difference with this one, when I did this last time, I didn't take the blade with me and he dropped it in. So... She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. All right, warn her. Stop that. I thought this was a little too easy. Your body lunges forward to sink the blade into her back, but the princess swiftly moves out of the way before you can connect. Stop it. Stop resisting me. I am trying to get you out of here alive. Resist. The blade. Move. The. Blade. You're doing your best to help me, aren't you? I can see the conflict in your eyes. So last time she was really nice and then stabbed me to death. I'll make this quick. Oh god. She steps forward and pries the blade from your rigid hands. Maybe I'll see you in another life. And then she slits your throat with an almost clinical ease. Her face remains unchanged as she watches you collapse to the ground, blood flowing from your butchered neck. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. I hope it was worth it. Chapter 2, The Prisoner you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. Okay, we are back. A warning. She will... Yes, yes, don't believe a word she says. Just take the knife and do what you're supposed to. Wink. Wink? Did you just say wink out loud? No, I didn't. Wink. Just ignore this clown and focus <laughs> on the princess. The interior of the cabin is mm. less a cosy woodland retreat and more like a dungeon. A few pathetic wisps of starlight attempt to illuminate the cold, uninviting stone walls and thick, wrought iron bars barricade the windows, reminding anyone who enters that this is a prison. The only furniture of note is an iron table bolted to the floor. So I think there's a couple different you paths the with this from one, the so idea. I'll Much try both paths if I can. Blind hope alone. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old stone staircase. A few sputtering torches attempt to vaguely illuminate your path, dancing across glimmering patches of slimy moss on the stone steps. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her voice, harsh but controlled, carries up the stairs. Is that a visitor I hear? Please, come downstairs. It's been a while since I've had company. I wonder what visitors she could be referring to. Are we not the first? That's actually a good question. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes oh. with the princess. She looks up at you, the heavy collar around her neck clanking loudly as she moves the chains binding both her wrists to the far wall, joining the metallic chorus as she adjusts her hands in her lap. Should we be worried about the one around her neck? Why would you be worried about her restraints? If anything, they'll make your job easier. Have you noticed the empty chain on the wall? Odd that in a place where everything seems to serve a distinct purpose, there would be something so obviously useless. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? The two of us should chat before you bury that thing in my heart. Okay, so I'm not sure I need to do much of anything. Do you see how locked up she is? I'm just going to leave her here, sit with her or slay her. Should we sit with her and try talking first? You step towards the princess, but she stops you before you get too close, holding up one shackled hand. There is fine. I'd prefer we keep some distance until we've sorted this out. That's reasonable. We do have a weapon. Might as well put her at ease. I'll sit on my bum. 
You do as she asks and sit on the floor, still a good distance away from her. Thank you. Now, what are your intentions for me? What do you mean, my intentions? Yes, your intentions. You have a knife. What are you going to do with it? Why are you here? There isn't a keyhole in these shackles, so I'm afraid my only way out is surgical removal. Is she forgetting about the shackle on her neck? Or does she think she'd survive a beheading? You're right. Maybe she's delusional. All the more reason not to trust her. Unless she really could survive. Though I suppose you could just be here to kill me. But I don't think that's in either of our best interests. I've been here before. Am I the only one who remembers that? Oh? Are we acknowledging that? I thought we weren't going to give away the game. But yeah, I remember. So you've already been here. As much as I would like to remain in denial, it's no use. This has complicated things. It's complicated things how, exactly? Ideally, this was supposed to be one and done. You go to the cabin, you heroically slay the princess, and in the process you save the entire world from being damned to oblivion. The situation right now, where you're getting a second shot at things, is a contingency. A contingency for what? For you failing, obviously. And you being here means that things are going to be a lot harder than they were. I really shouldn't say anything else, I'm just going to make it worse. Just... good luck. If you knew this could happen, why didn't you tell us? All of this is incredibly valuable information. It would have changed our actions considerably. I needed you to be in the dark for as long as I could keep you there. It's important. Necessary, even. And maybe I wanted to be the first version of me that you met. I didn't want to be confronted by the alternative. That's pathetic. I never said I wasn't. Wow. I get it. It would be pretty upsetting, wouldn't it? To know that you might not be the first version of yourself. At least we can remember what happened before. Seems like we should count ourselves lucky for that. He gets it. You're lucky. So don't waste that luck by messing it up again. Alright? Moving on. Why is it important for us to be ignorant? How is it ever helpful to be in the dark? The more I say, the more your mind will swim into dangerous waters. Even saying that is too much. Your success hinges on you having imperfect information. For the sake of the entire world, you need to accept that. I won't. Fine, but you won't get another word from me on the matter. Yeah, sure. We'll see about that. Just give it a rest, this isn't helping. Focus. This is a serious situation. You shouldn't be daydreaming. What happened after I died last time? Nothing happened. You died. I went upstairs. I couldn't leave. I found myself in a new place in chains again. More of them. And now you're back. Is that really all she knows? It's not like we have much of a clue about how things work. And she's probably even more in the dark than we are. You're looking at me like I might be hiding something. I'm not. I guess it's possible she really doesn't know anything. Maybe both of us are stuck in this loop without any idea why or how. How am I supposed to cut you out if you didn't notice your head is in a shackle? No, no. Like I trust you to come any closer with that knife. All you're going to do is hand it to me and watch me work. But she would have to cut her head off, right? She can't be suggesting that. She certainly seems confident. Maybe she knows something we don't. Or maybe you should consider the most likely scenario. She's bluffing so she can disarm you. Though if she isn't bluffing, whatever she has planned might be for her benefit alone. There's no guarantee that what's good for her is good for us. So, what should we do? I don't know. I'm just spelling out our options, listing the pros and cons. Then let me help you. I'll start with the cons. If you're handing her your weapon, the cons are that she might use it to escape and end the entire world. And she might use it to kill you. That doesn't sound great. <laughs> what about the pros? There are none. Welp. The pros are that we can't trust him. 
possibly even more than we can't trust her. And whatever she has planned could do something to mess with what he has planned. I don't think there's a right answer. Or maybe they're both screwing us over in their own ways. What's the other chain on the wall for? I don't know, but you could always try it on. Maybe it'll fit. I hope I don't actually have to say this, but please don't lock yourself in chains. We need you ambulatory if you're going to save the world. I want to do that one. I have as much reason to distrust you as you distrust me. I do. So I guess this all comes down to which of us caves first. And it's not going to be me. I'm extremely patient. It's probably better if we take action anyway. No use trying to wait her out. That's playing to her strengths. I'm not giving you a weapon. I'm not giving you a weapon in case you've forgotten you killed me. I can cut you out of there. I'm not giving you a weapon. Okay, trust her. If you want to leave, I'm going to be the one with the weapon. Cut her out on your own. I think I'm just going to leave you here. Leave her in there or slay her. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, inspect the shackle. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And why is that? Do I even need to explain myself? It's a shackle and it's one without a key. Do you want to be stuck here like she is? You know what? Maybe I do. And what? Is it going to lock the second we put our wrist into it? I don't know. Maybe it will. He doesn't want us to look at it. That's all the reason we need to investigate. But what if he's telling the truth? He isn't. I am. Oh, I'm sus about that. Let's do it. <sighs> Against your better judgement, you approach the chain dangling from the far wall. She's got a the face like watches you bruh, with faux disinterest really? as you inspect it, though she can't fully hide her curiosity. I don't want to say what I'm supposed to say next. What is that supposed to mean? It sounds bad. Is it bad? Yes, it's bad. Come out and say it then. You're just wasting time. Fine. As you hoist the shackle, its heft shifts within your grasp, as if pulled by some odd magnetism. <laughs> Before you can so much as blink, it practically leaps from your hands, snapping around your neck. And, as if your situation weren't bad enough, the same magnetism repels your blade, which is flung from your hand and sent skittering across the floor of the basement. I did an oopsie. Excuse me? Yes? Are we stuck here now? Yes. Huh, so it does fit. And I guess it doesn't like your knife. We're stuck here together, aren't we? That's funny. What are we supposed to do now? Can't even cut ourselves out. Guess we'll starve. It's horrible. It's not all bad. We learned a valuable piece of information. Not to touch things we're specifically told not to touch? No, that there's something special about this loose chain. It's clearly important. So we'll be Most quiet then, I yeah. guess. Yep. What should we do? Wait, I guess. Maybe something else will happen. Maybe not. Did you know this was gonna happen? No. Not on for small talk, are you? Nope. That's rude. You and the princess wait in silence, though neither of you knows what you're waiting for. But you're waiting for something. You're waiting for anything. This is so boring. There must be something we can do to get out of here. There must be something we're missing. But there isn't. Time passes. It passes and passes and passes. And the basement of the cabin remains much the same. It is cold and silent. At least the world is safe. It isn't. You're stuck. Too far away from both the princess and your blade to do much of anything. But she's not ending anything, she's just sitting there. Her very existence is a threat, it harms everything around it. How exactly does that work? It just does. But your line of questioning is interrupted by the passage of even more time. And after that, even more time passes again. And let me guess, the cabin remains the same. If time is passing, the cabin can't be the same. Even if the differences are small, they have to exist. That's just how things work. I suppose you're correct. Things are changing. The differences are small at first. A bit of weathering here, a bit of erosion there. But then they get larger. And larger. Hey, have you noticed the basement changing? I don't like small talk, remember? 
Still rude. Wow. You continue to wait in silence, and the cabin continues to change. The decay comes faster now. You can see earth through holes in the stonework, can watch lichen spread along the seams of the walls. That doesn't make sense. Has our entire concept of time changed? What happened to starving? We should have died by now if the rocks around us are starting to erode. She hasn't starved. I guess she hasn't. Even more silent time passes as you watch roots push themselves through the increasingly porous walls of the basement. Dirt seeps inside, flowing across the stone floor like a liquid, covering the ground and threatening to swallow you both. Time continues to pass, and pass, and pass. Until suddenly, there are no walls. Oh, wow. Then, and? I think he's gone. An array is gone? We waited that long? Would you look at that? We made it out of the cabin, and nothing bad had to happen to either of us. So this is the outside world. It's cold. Oh, goodbye. Oh, that's so sad. We'll see what she has to say about her, and then we'll try another path next time. There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. We're supposed to be there. Do you know what we'll find out there? This one is cold and cynical. She has protected herself when others could not. She will make for a clever heart. Do not mourn her. She doesn't need to be protected any longer. Okay, now we're gonna reload. And next time, we might try murdering her. So